we are very honored to be joined again by former college football coach and current senator. That's Tommy Tupperville. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Coach, you, along with Senator Joe Manchin, you have introduced legislation aimed at addressing a myriad of issues, really, but most notably name, image, and likeness. Can you uh, give us the details of this bill? Well, first of all, it's been over a year since we've been working on this, and we've had dozens of people uh, working on it and also getting facts and, and uh, I guess you would call it uh, information from you know, coaches, athletic directors, presidents, uh, NCAA, parents. Uh, we've had a lot of people involved. And again, this is not my legislation. This is pretty much what uh, all the people involved in college sports uh, are looking for. Now, you've got disagreements with some on, on all these topics, but uh, the end game on this is Joe Manchin and I wanted to make sure that we get all 50 states doing, a, you know, some basic points and then give the NCAA an opportunity to build on it from there. And uh, if we don't do this, we're going to lose college sports, as we all know it. And we all love college sports. Uh, and it's just not football and basketball. This is this is women's sports. This is Olympic sports. There's almost, only so much money that goes around, and it takes a lot of money for all these sports. Some schools have upwards of five, 600 student athletes. Now, I'm not against athletes making money, but the one thing that we wanted, we wanted to keep in mind – it was two things. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the, the players are uh, understanding of what this responsibility is of going to a major university or to any university. It's education. And we got to leave education in this. If we get away from education and just talk about money, I mean, that this won't last uh, uh, till the water gets hot. I mean, this that, we're going to lose it. So, uh, I'm, I'm for players making money. I've, I was around it for 40 years. I understand how hard it is, mm -hmm. but we kept all those in mind. So Joe Manchin and I got together and said, let's talk and, and try to put some basic points. <clears throat> uh, one of the things is get uh, the money out of recruiting. Uh, the problem is that the Supreme Court says these athletes can make money, and I'm good with that. It's called a name, image, and likeness. It has nothing to do with recruiting. And you've got coaches from all sports out there offering money in different states. And even some states are offering money to ninth and 10th year old, 10, 10th, ninth and 10th graders and saying, if you commit to us, we'll give you $50,000. I'm just putting a, a figure on this for the next two or three years. And when you get to that point, we'll up that money. We, we've got to get out of that. I mean, this is, it, it, it doesn't work that way. There, there's nothing fair about some states being able to do that and some states can't. Uh, so we're trying to get recruiting out of, we want it to be a scholarship. And then when you get there, you earn that money off of your name and the talent that you put forth in your work ethic. That's what the Supreme court meant this for. Second thing is, and I think is so important is this transfer portal. Uh, and we went back and forth on this. Uh, some coaches, a very, there's a few coaches that say, you know, it's really not that bad. Well, you look at it as we speak, It uh, in some areas it might not be bad, but it's going to get worse as it goes. Because what you're doing is you're teaching young men and women to look at money and quit on a team that they they sign with uh, for money. And again, I'm uh, I'm all for money. but And I'm for them getting paid and transferred. But we want to go back to the old rule. And most of the coaches, administrators, and even some parents said, Let's go back to the old rule where you can transfer, but you got to sit out a year mm -hmm. and you still make money. If the collectives want to pay you money, hey, so be it uh, if you're sitting on the bench. But this just transferring at any time and these transfer portals right after Christmas and then, of course, uh, after spring practice it makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, that 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 doesn't stand up for the basics of what college education is about. Uh, we had some. Uh, uh, some things that we put in there of educating young men and women on contracts, uh, how to do contracts, the literacy of, of, of money and how to handle money. Uh, there was a health uh, uh, point in there that we wanted to put in to make sure that anything cognitive, uh, anything to do with the brain or orthopedic, if they had problems after the graduation, then they're going to be covered for so many years, paid for by the football playoff and the college basketball playoff. 
that's probably where the money's going to come from. We'll build on that each year. Uh, that's the basic points. It's uh, again, it's all about recruiting. It's all about transferring uh, the health part. Uh, but we got to take care of these athletes. And again, I'm I'm not against them making money, but my goodness, we're 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 this this uh, this is a mudslide going downhill very fast. Well, I love hearing you make a distinction between name, image, and likeness, NIL, and then pay for play, which is through recruiting. I mean, look, I, I played college football. I love college football. I've never heard anyone say the reason I love college football is because those guys out there aren't getting paid or they're being exploited. No, this is America. I mean, if you have a skill set that warrants being compensated for, we're all in favor of that. But there does seem to be a situation here of free market economics versus parity. Uh, parity within a conference or across the country where, like you said, those schools in those states have access to, uh, you know, the same resources. Um, there is uh, a sentiment around the country which says, hey, the government shouldn't be involved in college athletics. We have a governing body, the NCAA. Have have they failed us regarding this issue or was the NCAA put in, in it? put in an impossible position to which you guys said, hey, as Congress, we have to respond here? Well, that's the first thing I told all my friends out there in the coaching business. Hey, you really don't want the federal government in your business because we can't <laughs> handle anything up here, much less college sports. Uh, I mean, 32, we're $32 trillion in debt. I mean, uh, uh, any business yeah. would, everybody would already be fired and run off and and uh, maybe put in prison what happened with a lot of this money. But uh, uh, again, as, as I told all of them as we worked on this, listen, this is not a rule that we're that, that we do it. This is a law. Mm -hmm. You got to go by the law. And uh, you know, fifty states. Now you've got states like California and some of the other states. They want to do their own thing. Hey, and and at the end of the day, you, you're going to have to make a decision. College sports going to have to make a decision. Do you want that one or two states to to ruin everything else that you've got, or you don't want them to go out on their own? Whatever. NCAA. I've never been really a fan. Uh, I've understood more since I've been here after looking at all this stuff, uh, what they have to go through. They can, football really doesn't fit into the equation of NCAA. Mm -hmm. Now they can handle basketball and all the, all the Olympic sports and women's sports, but football really doesn't fit in with that. But, uh, I can understand where they're coming. They have got more lawsuits going after them and they just couldn't afford it. I mean, it just yeah. got over their head. So. We're trying to help out the NCAA. Now, once if, if say we got to, this has to go through the Senate, it has to go through the House, and then Biden has to sign this. And now that's kind of like finding a needle in a haystack if we can get this through all, all those barriers. But uh, if that were to happen, we just want the NCAA to take these five things, say, guys, listen, if you're going to be in the NCAA, we're going to go over these, and then we're going to put these parameters around it. They build from that. Uh, but yeah, they're exactly right. The federal government involved in this, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Well, you know, coach, being a former athlete, you know, being a former coach, you know, has that, what experience has that helped you come up with the things that are in this bill? Well, I, I put myself in the shoes of what I've seen over the years of hundreds and hundreds of athletes, where they come from, uh, their needs, their wants, uh, as I used to tell my players and, and even the ones I recruited, but you know, this would be the only time in your life that you have to ha have to have two full-time jobs at one time because college sports, and y'all know this college athletes, uh, the average person has no clue what they go through in terms of workouts and, and meetings and, and tutors and all the things that go along with, with, with the coaching part. And then you throw in the academics, my goodness, it is very, very tough. And so that's the reason I've always been for athletes making a little money on the side because uh, there's no chance for them to have a part-time job to where they can go and work and yeah. make a couple hundred dollars a week and go out on a date and possibly put gas in their cars. Now, over the years, I will say this, NCAA has, has come up with a, a lot of things like cost of attendance where players make money every month. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pell Grants players make money. I had one coach tell me they went back and looked at last year's football team and they spent $187,000 per player. That's a lot of money, 187. So at the end of the day, coach, why are you doing this? I want to save women's sports and Olympic sports, football and basketball, and probably baseball can survive. Mm -hmm. But if we don't do something about this, the money's going to go to those three sports and buying and, and uh, investing in players and the donor money that would normally go to helping facilities for Olympic sports and women's sports is going to be gone. And so you're going to, you're going to have, you're going to be scrapping women's sports and Olympic sports. Uh, right now, some schools have 15, 16, 20 sports, and you're going to be looking at half, maybe half the sports. Mm. 
it is very expensive, very expensive to do to, to run these and then be able to have the facilities. So there's a lot of factors that go in there. And of course, I, I've been around it for you. I, I, I knew knew and know what they're going through. The athletic director is looking at the bottom line. Uh, people ask me too about revenue sharing. Mm-hmm. A lot of these schools are getting ready to make 60, 70 million dollars on just TV money. I, I'm, I'm one that, hey, they need to take part of that money and give to every athlete, to every athlete. And, and we can satisfy some of these needs. But this, some players making 2 or $3 million and then somebody playing next to them making, you know, 10000 uh, you're looking for a disaster to happen because y- y'all know this. If your dressing room is not in great shape in terms of mentally and, uh, uh, you know, guys getting along with each other and understanding, hey, we're in this, in this together, but – Wait a minute! This guy's making two million, and I'm not making any. Yeah, How is that going to survive? How is that going to survive in college sports? It's not going to survive. Yeah, no, that's a good point, and you you see that at the professional level, and you know we've talked about that, you know, at nauseum. Um, the uh, you know the revenue sharing model. I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my next question. And I've told guys before, like, be careful before you ask for a bunch of money for playing college football because you know some of those other sports on the campus may go away. They're not revenue generating sports, and if we're going to have this mindset that, well, you know what, if they're not generating revenue, then they need to get gone. I only care about the sport I play and making money. Well, that's one. That's one mindset to have, but my college experience was made better because there were other sports on campus. That much I know for sure. The revenue sharing model will be interesting to see if some of these uh, institutions uh, implement those. But Senators Cory Booker, Booker and Richard Blumenthal have also proposed legislation regarding name, image, and likeness. What are the details of that, that bill? And is this a situation where we could see two bills passed on the same issue? Yeah, both those guys that were in with us when we were putting our bill together, and I'm sure they wanted to add some things. Uh, some of the, the the our Democratic senators want unionized players, uh, want individual contractors. Uh, that would be very tough to do. It'd be detrimental to to, to all sports uh, for players to just come in and say, "Well, I'm not getting enough money. That's, we'll, we'll go on strike." I mean, I, I, that is not what education is about. Uh, Again, I'm I'm for all of them making money. I want them to have a great experience. But for us to put federal government and unions into college sports, I think it'd be devastating. So uh, I think that's some of the things that they were looking at. Also, independent contractors. But you guys know, y'all know about the college sports. I mean, it's it's a great experience. It's something that it's tough. I mean, you go and. And you have to build friends and relationships for four or five years. It's a great social experience. It pushes you hard. It makes you better. You understand time restraints. You understand organizational skills. The only two things, only two things that we have left in our country, uh, because a lot of these young men and women don't have one or no parents, is sports at all ages that teach you things of, the, of, of values of this country and the military. And those two things have have we're hanging on to by the thread of our teeth. I'm telling you, it is our military is changing daily. And look at sports and what we're talking about here. It is uh, it's everything's turning into money. Everything's turning into an individual person other than team. And we cannot afford that to happen. One last question here for Senator Tommy Tupperville, and Blaine and I were talking about this right before you came on. It's the transfer portal. You know, when we were playing college football, if you uh, transferred out, you had to sit out a year unless you had already graduated or if you go down a classification. You had to sit out two seasons if it was within the same conference. Now we've seen the transfer portal window just open up completely where you can transfer anywhere you want. At the same time that this name, image, and likeness was coming about, I saw that this uh, legislation you are uh, proposing Posing addresses the transfer portal from a coaching perspective. How do you want to see this get handled? Well, I, I, I think there needs to be some exceptions. At the end of the day, you know, uh, maybe if I'll, I'll go back to one situation that, that that worked great, I think, in college sports. If you graduated, you had one year left, you could transfer, and you could go somewhere because if you didn't think you were going to be a starter, it gives you a chance. You fulfilled your obligation. You're able to go somewhere and enjoy that year as uh, being on the field, uh, possibly, uh, uh, you know, being a starter. And I thought that was awesome. But we cannot we cannot get into the part of, hey, uh, we're going to go to the highest bidder uh, for one transfer. I, I think that's detrimental 
to the education uh, of our young people in this country. And again, if you want to transfer, I think it's good. Yeah, you know, if you don't, you don't like the coach, you don't like the assistant coach, but you got to understand there's always something that that uh, that you got to pay the Pied Piper for. Uh, and if you transfer, you got to set a year. And that was it changed a lot of people's minds over the years that I was in. You know, I players come to me and say, Coach, you know, I'm not getting to play. I said, Well, you're just a freshman. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's going to take you a while. You got to understand, you know, how to play. You got to understand how to practice. Uh, and this this sitting one year out changed their mind. And so, uh, and then the next year, that young man all of a sudden the light comes on. Yeah. And look what happens. So mm-hmm. that again, it's it's a hard experience playing college sports. Very very hard, and it should be because you learn a lot from it. Uh, but again, now that we've thrown money into it, and one other thing I'll, I'll say this is you're going to start getting donor fatigue. Uh, yeah. You, th- yeah. you think about it. The donors yeah. are they're given two or 300,000. Now they feel like they own part of the team. And you go to the coach and say, hey, I gave you 200,000 <laughs> for that wide receiver, and he's not even playing. What the mm-hmm. heck's going on here? It puts a lot of pressure. It puts a lot of pressure on the coaches. Uh, and it's uh, uh, you can see – uh, things that are going to crop out of that problem that's going to escalate problems across teams across the country. And then that donor says, I'm done, I'm out. And uh, uh, it's just it's just going it, – it wouldn't last very long if you're asking me. Now, there's going to be some players that you know that's going, going to be great players. But, uh, mm-hmm. again, I think there's two things, the transfer portal and get re- money out of recruiting. I think that's detrimental. You can make all you want once you get there, but the Supreme Court says that's what it's about. You come, you work hard, and you make money off your name and image and likeness for how you participate, not what you did in high school. Yes, sir. I'm sure glad I didn't transfer out the first time I got homesick. Yeah, I wouldn't too. have lasted too long. Coach Tupperville, thank you so much for joining us. And I speak for the whole team when I say thank you for providing some leadership on this issue because it's very much needed in college athletics. No, thank you. Keep your fingers crossed and hope we can make, make a difference here again. We, we, we didn't invent the wheel here. We're just trying to help. So thank you all for what you all doing. Keep talking it up and and let's get back to college sports as we know it. But let the players make some money. Thank you. Got you, Coach. Yes, sir. Let's talk again soon. Man, that was exciting. <laughs> Needed it. Yeah, I mean, look, is uh, I've heard from a lot of people, hey, the, we don't want the government involved in college athletics. Why are they having to come yeah. up with the rules? I don't know why, but this is where we are. So at least someone's trying to lead. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we need leadership right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a uh, better person to be than Coach Tubbs. I still don't know how I, I don't know how it's going to be enforced. I mean, That's the biggest question. I mean, let's just take it down to the bare bones level. Whatever rule, what, whatever used to be a rule with the NCAA, which will now be a law with the federal government, you're still going to have teams that are trying to gain an advantage. 100%, you know. Now, 100%. I guess you could say on the NFL level, okay, well we have a salary cap. You know, so when a team, like any team, could just circumvent the salary cap and pay more money. Um, but you you would get caught and the punishment is severe. Yeah. Like, is that what we're going to see now? Like, if you're breaking laws instead of rules, that the punishment's going to be so severe that it's more of a deterrent? I don't Maybe. know. At this point, who knows? Who knows? Dude? Yeah. And the college sports are there. I mean, they're in a dangerous place right now. Well, the good thing is the product on the fields are as good as they have phenomenal. been. Right? It's you know? phenomenal. But yeah. still, I mean, that product can be damaged with legislation is behind. We're asking the federal government to get involved. Yeah. And, and you heard Coach Subs, $32 trillion in debt. We're asking these guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Feel great about it. At least there's something that there was some bipartisan support on. But then you have the Cory Booker and the Richard Blumenthal legislation where they just want it to be a union. Yeah. Like, it's just unionized. And if you don't get everything that you want, yeah. just quit and hold yeah. out and go on strike. Well, let's, These people will never be satisfied. Let's wake up and find out what we need to cry about. Today. Those people will never be satisfied. No, I'll never be. They're trying to gain an inch every time. YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's catch you on the next one.